Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to show you some fabrics with metallic accents. Several years ago, manufacturers started adding the metallic gold accents. And they've gotten better and better at it over the years. They really look good. I love just the little bit of bling. And um, the quality has gotten better and better. So the gold tends to stay on there throughout many washings. Now we can get fabrics with silver accents, and I wear a lot of silver jewelry. I seem to favor the silver. So this is a poinsettia print. These are Robert Kaufman's Holiday Flourish. We just got these in, very excited. Here's the blue version. You can really see that silver accent on there. For the first time this year, RJR Fabrics has come out with red metallic. So they have a new collection, Mary Berry and Bright, and it has red metallic. So there's just hints of little red there, and it's sparkly. It's not like a glitter. It's pretty understated, but it's really, really a nice upgrade. So we picked out some of these fabrics, and we're going to cut them and make a rail fence quilt. So these are the fabrics I've picked, and you can just see the little bit of accent of red shininess there. Very, very fun. Really excited to have these in our line. So we're gonna take these four prints and we're going to make a rail fence. It's a simple pattern because we want to highlight the fabrics. We don't want to cut them really, really little. So let's take our bolts over and I'll show you how to cut it and then I'll show you how to sew it. The rail fence pattern is a traditional quilt pattern. It's really easy to cut and it's really easy to sew. Every piece of patchwork is cut exactly the same size and every block is made exactly the same with four fabrics. So I'm going to show you how to cut these. You can make the rail fence in any size block you want. This is the block. It's just got four strips. I'm going to be doing mine two and a half by eight and a half. That's the cut size, so I'm going to finish with an 8-inch block. It's important to iron your fabrics before you cut them, and I just took my bolts over to the ironing board and ironed a little bit, and I'm going to cut one strip here to show you how to get these all cut. So I've already ironed it, and I'm going to layer my fabrics up. So I'm going to end up with eight layers here, and I'm going to cut them all at the same time. You may not like to cut eight layers. You can just cut two at a time. You can cut four at a time, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to cut an eight and a half inch strip this way. Then I'm going to cut the two and a half this way. That means my pieces will end up with their straighter grain along the long side, which I think makes the blocks much more accurate. So I'm going to use my cutting board for a straight line. So I've got my plastic ruler lined up on a line and I'm going to set my weight on here. I use a hand weight to hold my plastic ruler down. That way I don't get any movement up there. Now I'm going to slice through all the layers. You always want to have a sharp blade and be sure you cover that up when you're not using it. So these fabrics can be just pushed away. Now we are going to go eight and a half inches away from here. If you want to have a ruler up here to help you, so we want this eight and a half is right here. Now we're going to move this down to that line right there and I'm going to line it up on there and I'm going to put my weight in place again and then I'm going to make a cut. Now I just have to cut two and a half inches all the way along here. You can use the weight if you like but my hand will pretty much hold this whole thing down. So I don't have to use the weight on this short of a cut. I've got the ruler lined up with the line on the cutting mat here. Now we're just gonna move it over two and a half inches. So I know where that two and a half inch spot is and then I'm lining up exactly on that line. Now, if you're not sure if you got the right measurement, do it over again, and if you want, you can use this yardstick up here, so I'm at two and a half. So I'll put the weight back on. Here's the cut pieces. And that's 
all the sizes that we need for the quilt. There's just these ones repeated over and over. Now, every eight and a half inch strip that I cut will give me 16 of each piece. So that will give me 16 of these blocks. I'm gonna make my quilt a little bit larger. So I'm gonna cut another eight and a half inch row and cut that one up also. I have all my pieces cut out. I've got 24 of each piece. I'm gonna make 24 blocks. So first, I'm gonna just make two blocks. I'm gonna show you how to make two blocks. The reason we're gonna make two entire ones is so that we can make sure that our pieces fit together and that our seam allowance is perfect. So when you're using pre-cut pieces, you have to make sure you use a exact quarter inch seam. So we'll just make a block, finger press all to the same side. So when this block is done, it should measure eight and a half inches wide. And that is how big it will measure if I use a quarter inch exact seam. So there's one whole block. Now, this block should be exactly as big as the strip here. And you can see if I stretch it out, mine's a teeny bit bigger. And that's because I have a tendency to make my seams slightly smaller than a quarter inch. So I have to fight that we all as sewers have tendencies. Some people do a little narrow, some people do a little big. So if you make one block, you can just remind yourself, make sure you use a quarter inch seam. Here's two completed blocks. The whole quilt is gonna be made with this same block and we're gonna have some of them going this way and the rest of them going this way. So this is going to make a zigzag, like a split rail fence. So now that we know the blocks, are coming out the right size. I'm gonna chain piece all of them. So I'm gonna take these two pieces and I am going to sew them together and I'm not going to snip the threads between the pieces. So I'm just going to stitch this seam here. Leave it on the machine and then go to the next one. This method is a little bit quicker. If you enjoy making block at a time like this, Nothing wrong with that. This just goes a little faster when I change it. When you've got them all sewn together, then we're going to open this up, finger press everything to one side. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the next piece. So now we're gonna sew this on to here on every block. When that's all done, then we're gonna sew the last piece on, then the blocks are done. I've got the blocks all done here, and I'm just giving them a final pressing. Since the seam allowances were finger pressed already, they're really flat. I just like to make sure that the um, blocks are nice and flat before I stitch them together into a quilt. I'm just cutting borders for Donna's rail fence quilt over there. Just moving this along. This will be the first border that goes on. It's a three inch border. Then we're going to put on a lighter two inch border. Then we're going to finish with this big uh, darker red poinsettia. It should be really nice. To lay out the rail fence blocks, they all just go two ways. So I like to look at the dominant color, which is the red here, and I'm gonna put the red on the left, and I'm gonna put the red on the top. And I'm gonna do that every time. So once we get enough blocks, you'll start to see the pattern come out. Now we're starting to see that zigzag, which looks like a split rail fence, which is how this pattern got its name. So just remember, always keep the dominant color 
Left and top, left and top. So that's what the pattern's gonna look like. So I'm gonna take these over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch everything together, put the borders on and get it onto the quilting machine. Oh, I love how that's looking. The patchwork's all finished. The quilt is all quilted here. So you can just see those little hints of red sparkliness. It's subtle, but it really is nice to have that little bit of festive sparkle on there. So if you go back a little bit, you can see the rail, the real strong red rail in this one. The patchwork, this is four by six blocks. So it's about 32 by 48. And then I've added about 10 inches of borders all around. I really like the triple border like this. And then I used the nice holly print on the backside. It's really a nice throw size for Christmas. Of course, you can make the rail fence in other colorways. So here's another one metallic again. You can see the little bits of gold, nice blue fence going through there. This one is even stronger. We've got a really big purple section. Again, we've got the metallic accents in gold, which I love. And here's another rail fence. Now this is more abstract. So you don't see the strong fence, but you really see the cool fabrics. So rail fence is a great pattern when you have bigger scale prints or you don't want to cut them real small. This is another real pretty one here. We always make a lot of batiks. Here's a nice batik selection. So rail fence is one of our go-to patterns because it's so fast. We've got some here with under the sea theme, like a kid's theme, really a nice fun baby quilt project. This is a pattern we do a lot of pre-cuts in. So if you don't feel like cutting, this is something we offer already cut out. So remember, two and a half inches by eight and a half inches. That's what all of these rail fences are made, um, the sizes they're made from, and it's a really good size, really fast quilting. Thanks for watching our tutorial today and happy quilting. Thank you.